Thank you for the favorites. Yo, I hope everybody had a great Labor Day. Travel Bay, hello. Wait, it's Travel Bay's TSA. Okay, it's not Travel Bay. It's somebody else. Yo, thank you for the... Uh... Yo, how's everybody? Forgot to change my name, so I came in on my sister's account. What? Yo, Shorty, what's up? Who is I'm here and I'm important? Who is it? I'm a sucker, a sinner, three times a loser, uh -uh. a fool who can't buy you lane. Somebody knows me. Yo, okay. I hope everybody had a great Labor Day. Chicken and the corn. Okay. Yo, Jay Dizzle. Let's see what the contest look like today. Hey, I'm already number five for the hat today. What? Let's see. So we've had a few things going on. We have the bucket hat that's been going on. Um, a lot of people's been getting in that, winning it. Well, anyway, I ain't gonna read the contest. But anyway, I haven't been on. I haven't been on the app. I've been spending time with family this this uh, this uh, weekend. I hope everybody else has. Um, Skylight, what? <laughs> so, I barbecued last night. I cooked a, uh, I cooked a brisket for like 12 hours. And then I also uh, cooked two racks of ribs, made potato salad. We swam in the pool all day long. We had a good day. My dog got in the pool and swam with us for a couple hours. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, welcome to After Dark, y'all. We're just talking about what I did for my weekend. Yo, Miss Ashley, hello. Yo, how many people? One thing that's starting this week, I want to touch on a little bit. One thing that's starting this week, and a lot of you may be excited, and some of you probably don't. Maybe you don't even watch, watch it, so don't really care. But Thursday will be the first football game of the NFL season. I know Miss Ashley's going to be watching. She's going to be watching. I know that. Football season is here upon us. Um, we had college football start this weekend. I did not see any college football stuff. I was so busy this weekend. I didn't see anything. So, um, you know, I hope all of y'all's favorite teams won this weekend. Usually most teams always start with the easy schedule. Foosball is a devil's game, Bobby. Yep. You didn't miss anything? What about Ohio State? I know a lot of people were amped up about Ohio State. I'm sure they won. Oh, I've seen that. I, I don't. Is that like a fantasy football, Ashley? I don't play fantasy at all. Oh, you're just like you pick to pick who's going to win and who's going to lose. Yo, thank you. You just choose who you think will win the games. Happy and blessed. Hello. Longhorns beat Louisiana. What, Louisiana Tech? Yo, Dr. Kimberly, hello, love. You had to watch LSU play? How did you watch LSU play? I know you was like heavy into the mimosas. <laughs> Yo, Nick Style, what's up, buddy? Yo, thank you, Nick. What's up, brother? Y'all, make sure y'all favorite everybody in here. Um, 
we got top badges in here and we got VIPs in here. Nick Styles is a really good streamer on the app. He also he sings really good if you if you want to go in there and get him to sing you a song or two. Um, he does. He sings very great. Very great. So besides uh man, I like I cooked all day today. Like I put a brisket on at, at midnight last night and I had to get up at like seven o'clock. I got up at like seven o'clock and I wrapped it in tin foil and put it back on the pit. Uh and then, then I cooked it on like two fifty for till noon. Man, it was so good. Yes. You're out. Where are you going? Why are you out? It was good. It was good. And then, man, I seared, I seared two racks of ribs, and then I wrapped them up. And then, 20 minutes before I took them out, I uh, caked them with barbecue sauce and let the barbecue sauce caramelize on the uh, the ribs. Man, they were so good. Yeah, and then my my sister, like I made everything for the potato salad. She just mixed it all together, but it was good. <laughs> That's how we do it in Texas. Like I delivered, and then we delivered everybody food that didn't have nothing to eat today. So <laughs> making you hungry. I'm a foodie, y'all. That's one of the things I am. Is I'm a foodie. Uh, I had pizza. I had pizza Saturday. It was good. I had Mexican food Friday night. It was good. Well, not, well, I say to let, kind of the less fortunate. I have some family members that were that couldn't get out for for worry about getting sick and stuff. And no, I don't eat raw oysters. I do not eat raw oysters. <laughs> there it's like to me raw oysters it's like a booger i've ate them before it's like snot going down your throat it's just like yeah <laughs> try sea urchin no i think i'm good on the sea urchin <laughs> yo see yeah i'm out on the sea urchin yo Gigi, are you here I might have to message Gigi and be like, where are you at? The texture, yes. The texture is. Ugh. See, I can't even do sushi, man. Like this, the, 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 like, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, I, I've tried sushi. I just, I didn't like it. California Mountain had the best sushi. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Seafood is gross. Seafood. No, no, no. Not all seafood. Like, I love shrimp. I love shrimp, and then I love, like, crawfish, but... If you're in different parts of the United States, you probably don't eat crawfish. We eat a lot of crawfish down here because of the bayous. And they're really good. All right, Mr. Lemon, hello. Yes, we love mud bugs here in Texas because we're close to Louisiana. But you know, I didn't know, like, I know somebody from Sweden and you know, they eat, they eat crawfish over there too. It's real prevalent over there. I didn't know that. But yeah, they eat, they eat lots of crawfish over there. Your dad came here from Sweden? Well, that's awesome. If y'all, if any of y'all know Hanny Moo from the app, she's from Sweden. Karina, hello? 
Yeah, y'all check out Emoji J's YouTube page. He, he, he posts our show and several other shows on YouTube every single week. He edits them, posts them, and, and does everything. So if y'all ever want to watch a replay, if you missed the show, you want to watch a replay, unless he forgets. If you ever want to watch a replay of the show or whatever, go check it. Yes, go check everybody's show. He does everybody's show over there. Yo, Judge Jungle, what's up, buddy? Wait, is that Judge Jungle? Yeah, it is Judge Jungle. Yo, thank you, buddy. Yo, Judge Jungle also has a show on here. It's very entertaining. If you want to take somebody to court, hit up the judge, get them in court, tell them what's going on, and the judge will have y'all in court and spin it all around and, and, and let you tell your side and their side, and, and he'll have witnesses and jury and, and the whole shebang, the whole shebang. It, no, it says PFG, <laughs> it says PFG. Nice, nice work with trying to troll though. <laughs> la la, the topic tonight. Well, there really ain't no topic tonight. It's just, it's a, uh, you know, um, it's after Labor Day shenanigans, you know what I mean? Oh, you know what? I need to make sure you just reminded me before I start up. I got a couple of minutes before I'm going to start up, but I need to turn off. I always forget to turn off. Oh, the gift audio is off. I didn't forget. I already. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, y'all. We're having technical difficulties. Yo, I, yeah, Carly, I know you. Yo, Role Model Fresh. Role Model Fresh is in the building, y'all. All right, we're, right, we're going to go ahead and put uh, Quinn and JT in the box. Duh. Let me make y'all bigger. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. We in Texas already. We can't get no bigger. We in Texas already. We don't get no bigger. It's as big as we get. Facts, facts. So yeah, we was, almost missed the show. Day? What'd y'all do for Labor Day? Cook. What'd y'all barbecue all day long? Hi, everybody. What, what What's up, people? Barbecue? I made a pork tenderloin with a citrus honey glaze, um, a, a whole turkey breast, and then uh, some barbecued chicken breast, and did corn on the cob, and then she made some fried cabbage and bacon. Bomb diggity. Yeah, look, I'll go with all that except for the cabbage part. I'm out on that one, but. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't like cabbage, but I like coleslaw. So that's about the only thing. Oh, that's thing. odd. I know a lot of people that like sauerkraut, but they don't eat cabbage. I'm like, ugh. Broccoli? Give us some broccoli up. Yeah, we got some trolls over here. They know I don't like broccoli. Like, broccoli. <laughs> hey, you know, something people don't know, and I don't even know if y'all know this. And, and matter of fact, when somebody told me this, I was like, nah, you're full of crap. DNA has nothing to do with how things taste. And I got to looking it up because, you know, like, if I'm telling somebody they're full of crap, like, I want to look, right? So I looked it yeah. up, and they was absolutely right. Like, mm. your DNA makeup determines whether, like, um, that one of them was, like, if broccoli tastes just completely horrible to you, it's, it has to do with your DNA, and it tells you whatever, you know. If cilantro, yeah. if you eat cilantro and it tastes like soap, it's a DNA thing. So wow. Like, there yeah. you go. That's weird. Like, my whole family eats liver, and I can't stand it. Oh, that's good. That's my favorite, liver and onions. I love the onions and the gravy. I just can't do it on uh, on, uh, on, on liver. <laughs> Ooh. None I'm of the organs. I don't eat the heart. None of that. I like I the meat love part. liver and onions. It is my favorite. Yes. <laughs> <It's a> skylight. <laughs> okay. We have a featured show on Mondays, Chowing Down, since we're talking about food. We cook every Monday. We are not chefs. We cook what we're having for dinner. So basically, um, it's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, right? it's, it's everything different. you can imagine. And um, you can get all our old episodes at jquinfam.com. Jay does those for us. Yeah. But yes, anybody who wants to guest on our show, just DM us on Instagram and we'll cook something with you. Yay. Have you ever have you ever taken butterfly to pork loin? 
And then, like, I'll, I'll butterfly pork loin. And what I do is I put cream cheese on there with some jalapenos mixed in with it. I put it in the blender and I mix the jalapenos with the cream cheese and I spread it on there and then I roll it up. And then once I roll it up, I tie a string around it. And then, oh, that sounds good. Well, actually, <laughs> the last time I did it, I did it with bacon. I put, I wrapped it with bacon and, and toothpick all the bacon. And man, it was oh yeah, that good. sounds good. Well, I have a lot of digestive. I have a digestive disease, so we have to be really careful what we cook. And so oh, basically, our show, because I'm a cancer survivor, I'm uh, almost I'm 15 years in remission now, and so. We have to be real careful about what I ingest because I have a lot of issues with food. So that our show basically tells you how to make things you love when you can't eat things you love. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, yeah. I, have, I have a lot of problems like that, too, because they took out my gallbladder and my spleen a few years ago. So, Oh, wow. Right. That would be my appendix. Honestly, honestly, with me, like, I just eat what I want and I deal with it. You know, but I know I'm not always going to be able to do that. Yeah. Well, well, I guess. And also, you learn that the, I had cancer at 32 and I was still trying to eat like I was okay. And I'm almost 50 now. And so I learned that I really, really, really have to be very, very vigilant on what I eat. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. So what, what is y'all's favorite meal to, to cook, actually? Ooh. <laughs> Mine is butter beans and cornbread. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> Homemade cornbread with butter beans. Oh my gosh, it's my uh, favorite thing. <laughs> do you put bacon in your butter beans? Uh yes. Oh. My and Lord, I make cornbread, I make sweet cornbread from scratch. Oh yeah. Oh yummy. Man. Good stuff. Yeah. Man, man, man. I'm but the side that. of greens is my favorite, but not everybody likes greens, so yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, I can tear a big old bowl of butter beans up with cornbread. I'll take a big old piece of cornbread and yeah. break it up into butter beans. And then I'll, have another, then, then I'll have another piece of cornbread for when I get through eating the, the, the butter beans. And I Buttered take up. Piece oh, my and gosh. I, and I, you're, you're on top of all the juice. Oh. Yep. And you're overly full. Yeah. Ooh. Like overly full. Right. <laughs> yep. Way too full for anyone else. Mine is probably prime rib. I like to make a slow, a slow cook, a slow grill prime rib with a with a homemade demi glace sauce. It takes longer than it takes to cook the prime rib, but it's so it's so good, so good. Yeah, prime rib is really good. I've had it. Oh yeah. As long as you don't overcook it. It's always yeah. nice and tender if it's cooked right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people overcook it and make it tough. Mm -hmm. Like it's red. I'm like, yeah, but it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be red. That's what's up. Yeah, it's supposed to be red. Exactly. Well, to me, like if you're cooking a steak, it's supposed to be red too, in my opinion. But a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, unless, unless you can't digest it, you know, then you gotta have it well done. It sucks, but you gotta cook it all the way through to digest it. Sometimes. Yeah, I like man. I like my steak still. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I like it still blood bleeding. I used to. I can't anymore. <laughs> yeah. I am not allowed. Um, no, it's it's too spicy for me. I used to be able to eat spicy food. I really can't now. You know, but it's okay. I'm he's okay. About, he's talking about Indian food. I, I went to an Indian restaurant a few years ago, and it was like a, um, I don't know, it was a buffet or something. It was a high high class place, right? And and uh, I was out and about. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this this place out. So I go in there. And um, I go to try it out, and I was the first one in there. They just opened the door. And <laughs> the guy was like, hey, have you ever ate Indian food before? And I said, no. He goes, I'm a big, and I've never had a, somebody to – usually they'll, they'll – like, they want, they take your money before they, you know, they don't care if you like it or not, right? Yeah. So right. He just flat out told me, because I'm going to be honest with you, if you've never had Indian food before, he said you're probably not going to like it the first time. And I was like, what? And – uh I was like, well, I appreciate your honesty. So I've never actually had Indian food, but I do like spices. <laughs> so it's very, very well. It's very spicy, yeah. and it's a lot of curry. curry. What would you say? Pate yeah, a lot of curry. A lot of pate style food. Yeah, very mushy. That mushy you dip a lot of breads in. Yeah, they, and they. 
it's a, I don't know how else to explain it. It's very it's spicy, mushy. Yeah, it's very spicy. It's very spicy and everything's real mushy. This yeah, they did. Right? Yeah, no. This is, na- this, is na- spicy, this is spicier than Cajun food? Yeah, it's, different, it's spice. different spicy. It's more like a wasabi yeah, burn. Yeah, kind of like a ginger spice, wasabi it's spice. like a burny. It's a hot bag of the throat hot. Yeah, it's just different. I don't know how to explain it. It's not like Mexican food either, so... um. So look, it's like a burn your nose hair gas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so we went out to eat in uh, eat seafood. Yeah, there's a place here. There's a place here in Houston. It's called Papa Seafood. If you're ever here, it's really good. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I've been there. It's one of the best. I was going to raise in Houston. And uh, so we went to Papa Seafood, and, and one of the things I always get is a, a shrimp cocktail. Mm-hmm. And so they had some uh, horseradish, you know, there. And so I tell my daughter, I said, "Here, try this," and she's like, "What is it?" I'm like, "Ah, it's, you know, it's a little spicy, but it ain't bad." And so I, I talked her into taking a bite of it, right? And it like took her breath away. And she's like, oh my God, what, what? <laughs> all I could do was laugh. But you know, the first time I ever tried horse riders, that's how they got me with it. Like, here, try this. And I was like, oh, sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of things you have to try. Like the first time I tried sushi, nobody told me it was cold. <laughs> that was my biggest blow was here, taste this. And it was ice cold and that freaked me out. And but it took me years and years, and I really I don't like a lot of sushis, but I like some sushi, <laughs> very few, because we like we like to go to the uh, what, the hibachi grill. Yeah, the hibachi grill is awesome. We love to do that. Or they do the sh- Oh my gosh, I just love it. And they JT yeah. catches the food. I don't. I do not let. Look it at me. I'm not letting it hit the floor. <laughs> Hey, right, I'm, I'm telling you, what, like the hibachi, like my favorite thing at the hibachi really is the fried rice. Like they make the best fried rice. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. I make some hella good fried rice too. Yeah, we make really good fried rice, but dude, it's so good. The, it, the, the whole thing is fun. Yeah, it's, 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 we dig it. Yeah, but I'm not doing raw. I can't do raw fish. Yeah. Yeah, I like, uh, I like. I like my fish really. I like it grilled or blackened with butter on top of it. Oh my lord! Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, say, I grew up. I grew up fishing, catfishing, and, and catching fish, and hunting deer, cleaning the animals, and hog, and everything itself. You know, catching fish and eating them while the heart's still beating. You, know, you want some fresh fish? Go camping with me. You know what I mean? I'll fillet it. We'll grill it. We'll be eating it while it's still alive. You know, that's yeah. fresh. I heard you say you were you. You grew up in Houston. What part of Houston did you grow up in? Uh, where, what is now Katy? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Used to be. A- Katie, Sugarland area. I got you. Yeah, all families from there. I said my little brother still lives down in Lake Jackson. They were all working for the plant down there. Oh yeah, I was just in Lake Jackson not long ago. We went fishing. Um, the boat we was at was docked just out of uh, Lake Jackson. It was actually docked at Surfside. That's what's up. I don't yeah, yeah, my, uh, my my middle younger brother just bought a nice bait boat. He's been trying to get me down there to Lake Jackson and go fishing with him. I said, it's too damn hot. Let it cool yeah. off a bit. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my duck, y'all. My... <laughs> that was, that was duck? my duck. I have a duck in my Sat on a duck. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all are going to go, I know y'all cook a lot at home, So, but when y'all go out to eat, where do y'all go? What's a, your go-to? You're like y'all's number one go-to if y'all are going to go out to eat. Uh, there's a place here called Bubba, Bubba's. Bubba's. It's a big, huge restaurant. It has a huge Bubba's menu 33? and a bar. Mm-hmm. You talking yeah. about Bubba's 33? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we like that's to actually, get our uh, spot. It's, like call, it's, it's actually a, a spoke off of a Texas Roadhouse. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's right beside it here. Yeah, yeah. We like to go there because uh, they just have different food and the service is – they're hilarious. I don't know. It's either that or we want to go somewhere that you can have an experience, and then that's where you got to make a reservation. Like a Brazilian steakhouse. Brazilian yeah. Brazilian steakhouses are awesome. Piano bars, um, new restaurants, stuff like that. But if we're just talking about just to get away and go have a meal, it's usually it's like Bubba's. Yeah. Yeah, you can't lie. They're, they're very good. And, and they oh, it is. I love that place. It's kind of like uh, – well, it ain't this different food, but it reminds me kind of uh, what's that place? Um, 
the Cheesecake Factory, like th that place has a, a just oh, right. a, it's a, it has a huge menu and like pretty much everything you could. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's cool. But I got good drinks, big bar, TVs everywhere, good food, good atmosphere. No, if, we, if he wants margaritas, we go to Cheddar's. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those my, favorite thing, my favorite thing at Cheddar's is that that. Um, what do you call that butter, honey butter crescent roll? Oh my! God. Oh my gosh! They bring those in the beginning of the meal out. I order extra. I do order you? Because I eat two or three of them at a time. <laughs> no, yeah. We don't. We are. We all full before the meal gets here. before the meal gets here. But oh my gosh, they're so good. <laughs> yes, we love to go there too. We're we're foodies. That's what happens after you get. You get married, all you do is eat. You, <laughs> first, all I did was stream on Meet Me. Met JT, got married. All we do is eat. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, and, and I heard that. I heard that uh, y'all met on the app. And, 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 uh -huh. So tell me how that happened. Go ahead. Uh, shit, I, I moved to Wisconsin for a job. My aunt was starting a, a cabinet company. She wanted me to come up there and get it, get it running for her, hire a bunch of people and get it started for her. And, uh, and then I was going to move back here, and, and she was going to get me my own franchise of it because I've been remodeling and building houses my whole life. So I moved up there, and I didn't know anybody. So I'm like, I'm looking for somebody, you know, just to hang out with and chill without, you know, going out going out by myself. I'm not one of those people to go to a movie or go to a restaurant or bar by myself. So I, I started hop on this thing. I found this. I saw it on something. I hop on here. I started looking around. Met a few people, you know, uh, uh, Jen from Canada and uh, a few other people that aren't around anymore and hung out with them a lot. Come across her live one morning, and... She was just lit up, excited, at eight in the morning. I'm like, it was the Quinn of Heart show at the time. Yeah, Quinn of Heart. Quinn of Heart show. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna check her out. Where I was getting ready to go to work in the morning. I'm like, she's super excited in the morning. I'm like, I need this in the morning to wake me up. So I start watching her show every morning on my way to work. I put it on the screen in my truck on the way to work. I had about a 30 minute drive. I watch. I drop a little bit. I just stop light. I'd hop in there and drop a little bit. She go, what do you give to me for? I don't know you. I'm like, yeah, blah 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 blah. <laughs> like six or seven months later. We end up talking and start talking. We start talking off the app a little bit, video chatting and blah, 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 and that, getting to know her. And uh, I come down to Texas. My grandfather died, and I came down for a funeral. And, I, and I'm from the area where, where she was from. I was like, hey, I'm going to be in the area for a week. Uh, you want to hang out, like go grab dinner or something? She's like, I don't know you. I'm not going to meet you. I'm like, really? We've been talking for like a year almost. I don't know you. I'm not going to meet you. I'm like, well, okay then. So I came down and went to the funeral, did all that, went back to Wisconsin. And I'm working and working and still checking the live out, still dropping gifts. Blah, blah, blah. Became top gifter. We kept gifting and gifting and gifting and hanging out and talking. And we, we, and we had like a, a big family. We built a family on here. And uh, the next time I came down, I came down to pick up a trailer that I bought uh, in, in Waco to take back up there for work. And I was like, hey. But we made plans this yeah. time. I was like, I'm coming back down. Do you want to hang out? She's like, sure. So I pick up the trailer. I go to the house. I'm going to hang out for about a week or so. I like two weeks. I don't you know. didn't want to leave. It yeah. Was, it was a while. Forever. And then, uh, so I go back I go back to Wisconsin, work for a little bit, finish up a couple of jobs. Came back. I came back to visit again, stayed another week or two. Left. 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 Came back. Came back again. And never left. And then she said, uh, <laughs> He yeah, asked me like, to marry him, and he never left. Yeah, on live. <laughs> on asked live. Asked me to marry me on live. And then we went back up there and on got live. all my shit and came back and to that, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, you got. Lost. And this is three years later. Yeah, that was three lost. years ago. That, that that is a good story. That is a great story, because you know I, I've been on the app for quite a while, and I've seen I've seen some people that I, I've just seen some horror stories, and I think we all have if if we got. Oh on. yeah. You know, a lot of times people ain't what they seem to be. Like the, you know, on, on this it's true what they say. Like online, you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, you meet in person, it's a different dynamic. So well, yeah, yeah. that's why I didn't meet him the first time because I was like, I don't know you. You don't know me. You've been watching me on my live show. I could be anybody. You could be anybody. You have to. You have to really. You don't want to disappoint a viewer once you meet them because in person you're, you're stressed out maybe, <laughs> or you're not as fun, or you give it all to your live show so you're tired. So that's kind of how it is. You know, you you always. Whenever you always hear that, oh, I met my idol, and oh, I'm, I wish I never met him. Well, it's because they have a real life outside of meet me. <laughs> yeah. well, they have so bills that. and stresses yeah. and animals and kids and family. And so when you meet them on a regular basis, when they're not at their, because this sooner or later becomes a job if you're a badge. Um, when they're not working, they're just like y'all. 
We're just like a normal person. We have stuff going on. We yeah. don't devote our press every minute to our viewers when we're off the air. So that's what I was worried about is meeting JT and him thinking that I, I don't have regular stuff going on. But he fit right into our life together. He came into my life and there was a spot, I guess, waiting for him that I didn't know. I didn't know that that spot was missing or that piece was missing until he showed up and he fit so well into the, what my life already had going on because I care for my brain damaged brother 24-7 oh, wow. since my parents died. And so to put somebody in that is just, whew, <laughs> it's a lot. That is amazing. So, I'm glad, glad y'all found each other, man, because like, yeah, you know, some people look for somebody their whole life and can't find their person. So for y'all to be able to find it, and especially well, on the app. What I try to tell people, Kenny, <laughs> what I try to tell people is quit looking so hard. You know what I mean? Quit trying to find that person and be yourself. Be yourself and wait for that person that's, that's, that's your mate to go, hey, there you are. And when you find her, like I told him, I said, you need to write a book on me. I said, really, get, let's get to know each other before we jump feet into this crazy thing. Because on Meet Me, there's a tendency to fall head over feet for someone that you're not really even sure what their real name is. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. And it's not to be mean or say that's wrong because life is short. But I am more wanted to be more realistic about this because I, if I'm bringing you into my life, I'm bringing you into, you know, even though my son has grown, I have sisters and family, and so does he. And I want it to be, that's it, you know. Yeah. Well, see, that's like me. That's why you know I come in to meet me with my real name. Um, and you know because I want to be on stream who I am in person and, and I'm, I'm yeah. for the most part I am except for like if I get angry or something I try to hit that X and just like, exactly you know, but <laughs> yeah you know, there that, has been a, there that's has, what like, I people mean that know me, people that know me has been in my life there has been a couple of times where like I kind of lost my cool a little bit in, in before I could hit the X so it happens it yeah, does. Get yeah. up on IG everywhere. Yeah, you'll be on IG everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Look what Kenny did last night. Look what JT did oh, last night. Hey, listen. What people don't understand, though, they get mad about being posted on IG. Don't get mad about it. I tell everybody. I love it. All I'm publicity old. is good publicity. Exactly. Because That's what I say. There's been so many people. There's been so many people coming to my live, and they're like, all of a sudden, they start talking to me, and they're like, you're nothing like what I thought. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, I've seen this post on Instagram, so I came in here to check you out. There's so yeah. many people that see their posts, and they come in to check you out to see, and then they're like, yep. oh, and they're it, Exactly. You know? we, we get it all the time. People hear rumors about us. They hear all kinds of stuff. Yeah, come and on with it. I'm like, dude, I've been on this app for a long time. They long time. <laughs> I said, there is nothing y'all don't know about me. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for uh, for being on the show. We were good. We uh, appreciate it. I love the good conversation and the banner back and forth. I love hearing y'all's story. It is a wonderful story. Everybody, thank please you. favorite Queen and JT. Go check out their shows. Uh, it's on Monday, I think, seven p.m. Eastern. Correct? It's it's six yeah. p.m. Central, seven p.m. Eastern. And as we always say, my name is Quinn. I'm JT. Be good. I'll be good at it. Bye. All right, y'all. Thank y'all, man. What what a great story. What a great story. And it really is a great story. Um, for our next guest, if y'all haven't heard the wonderful and beautiful, talented Gigi, Gigi is like when you hear her sing, like I'm just like when you hear her sing and then you hear her talk, like it, it really it, it threw me off the first time because when I heard her sing, it really sounded like she was either from Tennessee or Texas. Like I heard that Texas vibe in her singing, but but she's from the UK, so it's like it kind of threw me for for a minute, you know. But Gigi, are you in the request? Yes, you are. So here we're gonna bring to y'all Gigi, y'all. And just so everybody knows while we're waiting, oh, the box is blinking. Gigi, you might have to re- Oh, there we go. I have been trying to get Gigi on my show for two months at least. And the first problem we had was she lived at a place that she couldn't be up real late at night because of her neighbors. She had to be respectful. And then she finally moved. And so we've been like back and forth, like, when are you going to be on the show? This and that. So finally I locked her in. 
thank you. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> so besides what I've already touched on, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Gigi. Um, I'm 26. I live in Canada, Toronto, um, Ontario. Um, I've been here for two and a half years now. So no, my location is not catfish. <laughs> um, and yeah, I came on this app by accident um, because I thought maybe POF would be better than Tinder or all the other meat market dating sites. And then I was like, oh, alive, what's this? Um, and then I saw people singing and playing guitar and stuff. And I was like, I know I do that. Would I be confident to come and do it on stream? So I did, but I was playing like this with my face out of the camera because I was so shy. And, um, and then, yeah, a couple of people came in and didn't know that I sang and got me out of my shell a bit. And now this is what I do to like entertain people. If you've had a shit day, I just go live and I sing and I try my hardest to take requests if, if I know them. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoy it. It's fun. It's my therapy anyway. So I'm glad that other people. One thing I can tell you all that she does that is very good, and it, it and I'm going to just tell you, and I haven't told you this before, but it impresses me so much. She will take a rock and roll song and make it into a country song, which in itself is really, to me, it's a difficult thing to do to make something your own that much when you sing country, country music compared to, to, to rock and roll music because – you have to change the keys. You have to maybe use a capo. There's so many different things you have to do. And so when she does it, it really impresses me because like I know musicians and, you know, some of them, will, they'll tell you, oh, that's a rock song. I can't do that. Gigi don't say that. Gigi goes, huh, let me make this rock song a country song. And she does very well. I'm sorry. I keep free. Am I frozen? Can you, you hear me? I can hear you, but you are frozen. <laughs> Okay. Um, Maybe to well, clear up. I'm ready when ready when you are when you guys are. Well, go ahead, go ahead, you, darling. Let's get it. Can you hear me okay like this, or should I plug in my earphone? I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm just gonna do it without the headphones then. <clears throat> so this first one, you guys might know. It might sound a bit different, but here we go. <clears throat> okay. No matter, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> no matter how hard I try, you keep pushing me aside, and I can't break through. There's no talking to you. It's so sad that you're leaving. It takes time to believe in, and I do. Oh, 
That proved the point. That is an old share song that was like a rock and roll song back in the 80s or maybe early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. And she takes it and just makes it country. And it's just amazing. Amazing. So I'm sure people were going to want to know, like, when do you stream? When can they catch you in your stream? Um, I stream like uh, most days or like every other day. Um, I try to sort of get on maybe like sort of around 9 10 p.m eastern time um but i mean it stopped being that frequent but i'm obviously if people are in, enjoying it more i'll definitely try and be a lot more frequent for the people <laughs> yeah 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 so do you have aspirations of being a top badge or are you just like doing what you're doing and, and not having to worry about all the top badge stuff i mean I was doing what I was doing, but obviously like it would be, it would be nice. Cause I think I've got something to bring to the table. Um, you know, I, I think I'm like a pretty genuine person as well. So I know that there's like, obviously a lot of top badges out there that kind of ruin it for people. Um, but then there's top badges like you who are like super down to earth. Like, you know, I just feel like. I think you would be a good candidate. Yeah, I, I would be able to get it. And it, when you Crazy. apply, when you apply for your top badge, if you need a recommendation, I will definitely give you one. I'm not at my. Well, I've got five thousand favorites, but I'm I'm not. I'm only at two point six million, so I'm still not eligible yet. I've got a way to go. That's all right. You will get there. You'll get there. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, do, how many songs did you want, Kenny? Uh, well, uh, we usually do one and then like, uh, on the way, like when, the sh when I do the last interview, I'll leave like five minutes left at the end of the show for, to sing a song on the way out. Okay, sure. No problem. I'll hang around. All right. Well, Hey, what a great interview y'all. Y'all make sure y'all favorite Gigi and go check her out. <clears throat> Eligible if they think they will five it to you. Huh? Do they? Uh, sorry, I'm just reading what Quinn was saying. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. But, okay, now we have our next guest. And everybody, please, though, favorite Gigi. Give her give her a favor. Go check her out. Uh, give her tips when she sings and make sure, you know, like, man, I love to see talented people on the app. And she's one of the more talented people, in my opinion, on this app. Um. Our next guest is a VIP. Uh, Auntie, would you like to request the box? Oh, that was quick. Sorry to everybody. Sorry to everybody. All right, settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Okay. All right. How are you doing tonight, Kimmy? I'm doing good. So I hear you're a black VIP. I am. I am. Are you going to try to get that boss badge that they got going on? Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to plug Meet Me for a second, y'all. If you want the, the real exclusive badge, it's called the Boss Badge. Uh, I think it runs between September something to October something. You'll have to look. It's got a banner that tells you all about it. I believe there's a banner that tells you all about it. But anyway, it's a very exclusive club. It's going to be given to, I think, the top so many people that, that gift the most top, top 20, VIPs. 20 VIPs of the month. Yes, so it's very exclusive, and uh, so if y'all like to do that, you know that's something you should know. look out for. I yeah. mean, if you want to yeah, drop that yeah. much, do it. <laughs> Auntie's like, no, no, not me. I've probably already dropped one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good on that. I'm good on that. Let's just focus on streaming right now. <laughs> so, what? So, uh, when do you stream? I stream typically pretty late. I stream at like around 9 to 10 of Pacific Standard Time, which ends up being around like midnight or 1 a.m. on the East Coast. 
but I'm trying to stream earlier on days that I have off or on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you're on the Pacific Coast, so I'm assuming like California. California. Yeah. San Diego. I say, yeah, I was going to say Diego, California, or, California or uh, Oregon or somewhere like that. Yeah, we, we have several friends on the app from California and, and Oregon, of course. And so, like, I know they'll get on live and they'll message me and be like, hey, I'm getting on. I'm like, damn, it's late. They're like, no, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, Everybody is like fresh asleep by the y'all make sure y'all favorite role model fresh and go check out her show, Acting Out with Role Model. Uh, role Model, if you want to plug that in there down there so people can come check you out, be, feel free. Definitely. Uh, acting so, Out Thursdays, 10 o'clock Pacific Standard, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Role Model, I'm part of the Model family. Come support her show. She's amazing. She is amazing. For those of y'all that don't know Role Model, me and Role Model go back a long ways. She used to battle Hovey all the time, and we used to always be in each other's live back and forth. And she's a very great person, very good person. I just met Hovey the other night, actually. She randomly came into my stream. I've never been to her stream before, but she's super nice, amazing. Oh, yeah, Hovey's the best. She really is. So, I didn't expect her to just pop up randomly in my stream. <laughs> did you become a streamer first or a gifter first? Um, okay, so I started off on a different uh, Meet Me Own platform. And I started out as a gifter first, and then I started getting into streaming, so it was therapeutic for me at the time. Uh, so I moved on from that app to uh, Meet Me, and I think I like my experience on Meet Me a lot more. Yeah, yeah, they're all they're all a little different. They're all owned by the same company, but they're all a little different. So mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of a personal preference, you know, apples and oranges type thing. Um, exactly. So you're a VIP. So, you know, I always ask people this when I know they're a VIP, like what's your favorite gift to throw? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm like, I, I can't hold credits. So, I mean, I mean, we're talking whatever a jet. Um, I like the party bus, uh, the party bus. Definitely. Um, probably got dragons. Yeah. Dragons. Like dragons. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the dragons, of course, the dragons. De yeah. Definitely the dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all depends, though. What I got, what I got to snipe. If they're putting it on the table, I'll put it on the table. If they want to snipe, we can play snipe games. Oh, yeah, I've been there before. That can get a, get very dangerous and, and can make your wallet get a little thinner if you ain't careful. Because like me, Definitely. like that's that's one thing I was known for on the app, and I'm still kind of known for that. I do not like being sniped, you know. And if somebody yeah. snipes me, like I will come back with a vengeance and be like, okay, snipe that. I've seen, I've been in other people's streams and I've seen oh, what you can do. <laughs> yeah, I'm very petty in case y'all didn't know. I hate to lose at anything. So, <laughs> I like the petty gift thing. I love it. It also draws people into your stream too, though. So, Well, one thing that kind of slowed me down was I became friends with a lot of people. So, you know, like even though I started out in just a few streams here or there, like I became friends with everybody. And then it was like, well, I can't, I can't throw big against them because like I'd feel bad so you know I always try to make it uh, always try to make it even oh yeah definitely definitely you know we got Leafly Bond in the house <laughs> but yeah for my streaming experience it started out as a, as a therapeutic thing so this is kind of like my escape from everything that I've dealt with in the past year or so so this is a, a great escape for me. I uh, mean, great people. We have great conversations in my streams. We get into some serious topics, some sensitive topics. Um, but, you know, I'm always an ear. I'm not a licensed therapist, but I'm always here to listen. And uh, we're all here to work through it together one day at a time. Well, that's funny you say that because, like, uh, me and a friend of mine was out the other day tooling around town and – you know, they noticed that every time we went somewhere, somebody would ask me, hey, can I help you with something or can I help you? And I always, I always, when people ask me that, like, especially when I'm out somewhere, I'll look them right in the eye and I'll say, are you a psychiatrist? And they'll be mm -hmm. like, what? And I'm like, well, that's the kind of help I need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, how, but, look, did y'all see how we mentioned Hovey's name and then like Hovey's going to live a long life. She's going to live a long life. That's what that means. Hey, listen, she heard her name and popped in here. She was probably in here lurking. Knowing mm -hmm. Hovey, she was in here lurking and said, oh, wait, let me come back in on my main. I know how she works. <laughs> <laughs> she did say she does love her lurkers. Uh, oh, she, hey, listen, 
Hovey has probably got the best lurk, all BS aside. People talk about my lurk game, but Hovey probably has the best lurk game of anybody on this app. Like, there's been times I go to tell Hovey something, and she's like, yeah, 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 can you already know? I'm like, you already know? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, how do you know? And she says, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> mind your business. Don't worry about how I know. Mind your business. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I definitely love that. Yeah, so, but we all lurk, or at least, I mean, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, we all have something that's going on. Um, a lot of what we talk about in my stream, for example, if it gets brought up, usually we have a lot of fun um, doing dares lately. Um, <laughs> we like we like uh, doing improv. We like to mess around. If we get into deep conversations, um, we do talk about, domestic domestic violence we talk about you know grief we talk because um actually the way I, the reason why i started streaming is that my partner actually passed away this last this last year um my mm -hmm. partner um, I, we we're married so it passed away back in february and streaming has been my therapy my escape to uh to kind of you know work my way through this because you don't move on from grief you just learn to live with it but um you know, I'm into my six months now, and uh, I love everybody I'm meeting on here so far. Yeah, man, I feel that. I feel that. Uh, and you never know what somebody's going through, and that's why I love talking about it in my stream. I get so many messages about people saying, like, oh, I really needed to hear that. Um, yeah, and I feel that, man, today. Because today is, today is September the 6th, and, and my father passed away September the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh 2017 so like i feel that like i know you know like every year this comes around i know it and i can feel it you know? yeah so definitely you always it's not something it. that goes away but you learn to live with it you learn, to live with, uh, learn, learn to live with it but um we're all here for each other we're supposed yeah. to be a community well you know um i don't know how old you how old are you i am 25 i'll be 26 in december uh, well, I'm, I've a little, a lot. I'm, I'm a little older than you. I tell everybody I'm 29, but really I'm like, <laughs> and, um, you know, um, Hey, can somebody get that out of here? Uh, <clears throh> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, at 44, you know, something I've, I've come to realize is, is it, you know, death is a part of the life cycle. And, you know, whether you want to accept it or, or not, it, it happens. And the, the older you get, the more people around you is going to pass and they're going to move on. And it don't get easier. I hate, I'd like to tell everybody it gets easier. And, some, and sometimes it is easier. It just depends, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I've had family members that were sick for a while. And, you know, I kind of made peace with it before it happened. But, I mean, it's still, you know, when you think about, people in your life and, and, you know, especially like holidays, holidays, yep. tough, you know, so speaking I, of travel day, um, travel Bay actually has a book that she wrote on grief and she has a show on Sundays. Um, it's, it's not featured, but she has a show on Sundays, letters to grief. I've been on her show as one of the first shows I've been on. We really connected on that. And we actually talked about that, how the first or the holidays are always the hardest, but you know, the second holidays, um, special dates are going to be a little bit harder, but, um, I definitely connect with the travel day on that. So, I mean, I made connections on here with everybody for different reasons and yeah. I just love everybody I met so far. So I just, I just started streaming on here in June. Yeah. So everybody like if y'all are having problems with grief or need to talk to somebody, uh, hit Auntie up in his stream or travel in my stream. And, and uh, you know, either one of them two can, can kind of help you guide you through some of your grief. Because, you know, a lot of people, I think that's the, the, uh, the issue with today's society, like, especially with technology the way it is, like a lot of stuff becomes desensitized. And so, yeah. so they don't understand exactly what, you know, it means. People see somebody, somebody people see grief. somebody in grief and in pain and they get scared. They get scared. They don't, you know, they, they push back from that. And uh, society has this thing where, um, especially with men, that men can't cry or can't feel pain. You know, we just have to go on and live life. But, you know, that's just that's just society saying what we have to do. 
and we don't have to live by that. Even if you want to just come in, if you don't want to talk about it, I can show you up. We talk about, but like, you know, we have fun and games. We have a great well, time in my stream. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was raised that way. My dad was a very hard individual and uh, he was a single parent. He raised me by himself. So, you know, that, that, that's, I was raised that way. And it was like, you know, Hey, listen, nothing's broke. You don't have a bone sticking out. You're not bleeding to death. Like, <laughs> Quit crying, like cry yeah. about something worth crying about, you know, kind of thing. And so, you know, in some, in a lot of ways it helped when you get older, but then there's some things it's like, wow, you know, like I, I feel like I should feel something here and I don't because I was so, you know, like you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to show emotion. And exactly. And that's what we're made to feel like, but it's totally okay to feel emotions. And uh, I think as a, Time goes by, you know, things are changing a lot in our society. Right. Right. Facts. Especially when it comes to this. So I have to ask, you know, in, in uh, do you like football? Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm not uh, too big on football. I like basketball. I like, um, I like uh, baseball. I live in San Diego. So I, I grew up watching the Padres, but in the Padres games, uh, Dave Roberts was my third grade teacher's uh, uh, daughter's uh, husband, so he came into our classroom. So I've I've loved uh, baseball growing up. Actually, oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So I definitely love my Padres. Love my Padres. Man, I, I'll tell you, got tra- talking yeah. about the Padres, the one person I missed that I wish was still around because he was an absolute genius when it come to hitting the ball was um oh man I just lost it. He played for the San Diego Padres and he batted around four hundred every single year. And Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. And Tony Gwynn passed away way before his time. Uh, he ended up getting cancer. And, Ooh, okay. But, like, I, I've showed videos of him um, to my kids because they play softball. And, you know, one of the things that he taught that I agreed with was he would say, you know, put the barrel to the ball. And a lot of, there's a lot of hitting instructors won't teach that. They're like, oh, no, you got to go hands to the ball or this or whatever. And, uh, he was like, no, you go knob to the ball, which is what I was always <laughs> taught. And the reason why you go knob to the ball is wherever wherever the hands go, the bat will follow. So, you know. I, I've never actually tried playing, but I really want to, actually. Because, you know, um, I'm wanting to, like, go out there and just live my life again and just uh, get to experiencing new things, having some fun. So maybe that's something I'll pick up on. Hey, try some uh, co-ed softball. Just have fun with it because, you know, co-ed, yeah. so if you don't get into the competitive aspect of it, if you just get a group of friends that just want to have fun and play and don't care whether you win or you lose, you know, it can be very fun. Um, you know, me and my brother, both of us are real sports oriented. And one of the things he does is that is he bowls, right? And I love bowling too. I, like I can't bowl to save my life. Like I'm not. Really, <laughs> I mean, I can bowl. I'm just not really good at it. And I remember it's telling all on the wrist. I remember telling wrist. my brother. I was like, "Hey, I want you to teach me how to bowl." And my brother looked at me. He goes, "Do you have fun bowling?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, "I'm not teaching you how to bowl." And I'm like, "What? That don't make any sense." He goes, "It makes perfect sense." He goes, "Because if you love if you love to bowl, then do it because you love it." He goes, "Because once you learn how," he says, "You're competitive like me." And once you learn how, then it becomes more of you're not doing it because you love it now. You're doing it because you don't want to lose. And, and then it's not exactly. So Exactly. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm a competitive person like that, too. I go all in if I get into something. Yeah. If you're going to do something, you got to go all in. Just got to go for it. Right, right. Facts. Facts. Have you ever bowled a 300 game? No, I'm not that good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story about my brother. Like, we was at work one time, and he – we was working out in the Texas heat. It was 104 degrees out here in the summertime, right? And um, he got a little dehydrated, and his, his arms were cramping up, and it was all he could do to even make it to his bowling league that night. He ended up bowling a perfect game. Oh, wow. And – uh you know, which is really funny because, like, I don't know if you know anything about Michael Jordan, but Michael Jordan back in the day, like, one of his best games, he he, he was sick with the flu during the finals. And mm-hmm. they weren't even sure if he was going to play. And he come out and he scored, like, 60-something points and just destroyed. He had one of the best games ever in, in playoff history. 
And so it, it, it's like competitive people, when they're faced with adversity, for, for, for whatever reason, that they're better. And uh, so he actually bowled two 300 games, and the second time he had the flu. He had the flu, and he bowled, you know, so it was like, it's kind of coincidence type thing, I guess. It's all, it's all in your mind. Um, I heard this story. I don't remember the name, but there was this track star that actually, you know, um, was the best in the world, and then they failed one year. And then um, while they were practicing for the next time that they were going to go, they would just, you know, be at the, be at the starting line to, for the training, and they wouldn't actually run. They were imagining themselves running. And then when it came time to actually go to, uh, to, to, to go and uh, compete, they ended up doing the fastest time ever because they were thinking about it and training in their mind before they actually physically tried to run. So I think a lot of things that we do is all in our mind. Well, that is a fact. You know, I coach softball. I coached my girls in softball for 10 years. And one of the things that I used to do with all the girls on my team is I'd make them stand in the box with the bat and I'd have the pitcher pitch to them, right? And instead of hitting the ball, I'd make them go through the motions and then watch the ball till the catcher catches it. Yeah. Okay. Because the thing to hitting the ball, like I always would tell the girls, I'd say, listen, to hit the ball, you got to what? You got to see it. Mm -hmm. Right, and a lot of kids when they hit, they want to pull their head like this, and then they're swinging, and they're not seeing it. So yeah. the way you teach them is is when the ball is pitched, they follow the ball all the way to the catcher's mitt, and you get them used to doing that, and then it becomes muscle memory. So then when they go exactly. to hit, they're automatically looking where the the ball, you know. Exactly, <laughs> and that's why in school they told you to take notes because it's muscle memory. <laughs> Listen, I can't say nothing about that. I was not a note taker. I, I was very <laughs> I was very good at memorizing what I read and I would always read like the chapter, like a history class. I would come in and I'd read the chapter that they had posted on the board and then I would sleep during class and my teacher would say, okay, you know, you're not taking notes. I'm like, I don't need to take notes. What do you mean? And so I'm not going to lie. I was that, per I just absorbed information too. Yeah. And I just took tests and I was able to just six, like get A's on the test without taking notes. If you always squinted when the ball came over, you probably needed some glasses. Just FYI. Not going to lie, I'd probably be squinting too a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Auntie, man, I'm glad you, you was here for, for uh, my show. Man, I appreciate you having on. I know you're new. Everybody go favor him. Check him out. Um, if you appreciate need you for time, having me. If you need an ear on grief and, and any kind of grief counseling or whatever, hit him up. And he want a good laugh. To talk to you. you want a good laugh. We always Whatever have a good laugh in my streams. Absolutely. 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 All right. All, All right. right well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me. You guys have a good night. <laughs> All right, buddy. Wow. What a good interview. What a good guy. Well, that's the first time I've ever talked to him. And I'm telling you, he, I can just tell you already. He's a good guy. He gives that vibe. You know, certain people give you that vibe that they're just, they're just good people. Uh, yes. So we're coming into the last part of the show. I know y'all see Hovey down here and she's gifting. Y'all make sure, I mean, I want to thank everybody for the gifts, Hovey. Thank you for the gifts. Uh, everybody, thank you for the favorites and the gifts. Um, make sure y'all favorite everybody in here. I was talking to him forever. He was a sweetheart. All right, Gigi, if you are ready to sing your second song, we would love for you to pop in the box. Y'all, this is a special treat because she, she, we get a second song out of Gigi. <laughs> All right, here goes. Mm -hmm. Probably know this one too. <laughs> okay. Of course. Beauty queen of only 18, she had some trouble with her child. He was always there to help her. She always belonged to someone else. I drove for miles and miles and wound up at your door. I've had you too many times, but somehow I want more. I don't mind spending every day out on the corner in the pouring rain. Look for the girl with a broken smile. 
so amazing thank you Gigi I don't know if y'all are like me but like her voice is just like puts me right in heaven puts me right there but music is the window to my soul I don't know about the rest of y'all but that's where I'm at y'all go check out Gigi she she's beautiful she's got a beautiful voice uh man she's just wonderful all the way around y'all go check out she streams every other day uh, between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern. And she usually streams pretty late. So if y'all are up late, you might catch her on like midnight, central, 1 o'clock in the morning. I've seen her on it too. So uh, she's up. She streams. And not only does she sing, but she's beautiful. So check Thank her you. out. Gigi, is there you. anything you'd like to add? Um. Oh, my God. Um. I don't know. I feel on the spot um, for listening to me. Um, and thank you for the gifts and stuff. Appreciate that a lot. And Kenny, thank you for having me and your awesome dude and super down to earth and nice. And yeah, thank you. Sing You're one welcome. of Avril. You'll have to come and visit me, Gabriel, because I sing a lot of Avril Lavigne. <laughs> yeah, go visit her for sure. Go visit her. All right, Gigi, okay. thank you so much, love. Wow, she's amazing, y'all. So somebody wanted to do la la. Let's see. Lala probably forgot she requested the box. We got a couple of minutes, so I'll put Lala on the box and see. She's been like requesting the box the whole time. Oh, it's not gonna let her in. It's not gonna let her in. Wow. Lala, you're out of there. Yo, thank y'all for the gifts. I appreciate appreciate that. Okay, well, I think Lala's out of there. We'll have to catch her later. Y'all, make sure y'all favorite all the gifters as well. We got Hobie down here spinning some wheels. And listen, if y'all haven't been to Hobie's stream,